Welcome to Community Connections. This program offers the Seacoast community an opportunity to connect and share their news and views during these changing times. Let's see what's happening in our community today. Hey everyone, welcome to Community Connections. This is Roxy Swicker over at PPM TV. This is a series getting us reconnected with our friends and neighbors here on the seacoast to find out what's going on these days in these times of change. I am here with PPM TV's executive director, Chad Cordner. Hi, Chad, how are you today? I am great, everything's going well. It's a beautiful day, so we're all set. And of course, we are here today with one of my favorite places and favorite resources, of course, the Ports of Public Library. And we are here with Laura. Good morning, Laura. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So if you could tell us a little bit about your role at Ports of the Public Library and just a quick introduction. So people will get to know you, we'll jump right in. Sure, um, so my name is Laura Horwood Benton. I am the Public Programming and Community Relations Librarian at Portsmouth Public Library, which I think is maybe the longest title that we have. Um, and I am in charge of all of the events at the library as well as things like this, community relations and the library's social media. And I've been there about six years now. Fantastic. What, what's your favorite part of the job over at the library? I have to say that my very favorite part of the job is something that is impossible to do right now, which is holding really big events. Um, so we do normally in the summer, we do tons of outreach. We're at things like the Kittery Block Party, which is one of my favorite things. Um, and we go to the farmer's market. We really like to have big themed events around the holiday season. Um, so a couple years ago, we had this big wizard's ball, which was sort of Harry Potter, Wizarding World themed. And we had about a thousand people over the course of the evening and had, it was just an immersive experience and very theatrical. And we had activities all over the library. So obviously that type of event is not possible at the moment, but we're, we're doing a lot of really great online stuff. So I really enjoy connecting with people in the community and providing things for free. It's a pretty awesome job. That's one of the things that, oh, sorry. <laughs> if you're doing online uh, uh, events, what are you, what are you doing online? Just Great question. Um, so we have a lot of ongoing events, things like we do weekly meditation every week from 12.15 to 1 on Wednesdays. We have a weekly world affairs discussion group weekly language discussion groups in six different languages. Um, and then we have nine total monthly book clubs, including one for emerging readers, one for third and fourth graders, fourth and fifth graders, middle schoolers, teenagers, teenagers who read graphic novels. And then for adults, we have fiction, speculative fiction, which I help run and is one of my favorites, and also a, a pretty new classics book club. And in September, we're launching an LGBTQ book club. And that's just the basic stuff. We also have lots of special events on top of that. So just this week, I helped to host a tarot card reading 101 workshop. Um, we have two series of standing up to racism three week workshops. Um, those are coming up in September and October. Uh, we also have monthly genealogy workshops, local history talks. We have two of those coming up in September, one on Celia Thaxter and her love of birds and also one on um, Levi Woodbury, who's another local personality. And then another one I'm really excited about is a haunted hikes program um, from an author who wrote a whole book about haunted hikes throughout New Hampshire. Um, so really great sort of ghost stories that you can go on a hike and see sort of like haunted places. Um, and that's on Saturday, September 26th. So a whole different range of things. So online, what, what are they looking like online? Are you doing anything like Zoom? Are they uh, like, so they're all, based on Zoom? Primarily we're on Zoom. Uh, occasionally we've used other um, programs, but that has been really great for us so far. And one of the things we were worried about is that when we have those sort of more intimate discussion groups, like a book discussion group or a language discussion group, or even we had a series of mindfulness workshops over the summer, um, we were worried that people wouldn't have that ability to connect with each other. But I think, um, you know, with the use of video, and also breakout rooms on Zoom, that has been possible and people have made a lot of really important connections even while they're in their homes, which has been great. Yeah, I think Zoom has is, is really helped a lot of people in this time. I mean, totally. were you guys completely locked down? So you're open right now? 
We are open for limited services. So right now, the services that we have in the building are computer use, which includes like printer, fax, or fax machine, scanner, um, and study carol space. So for folks who really need that indoor study space or who need to use our computers, they can make an appointment to do that. Um, other than that, we are accepting returns and we're offering curbside pickup for books. So one thing we're really focused on now is helping people find the books they want because we're not yet open for people to browse the shelves again, which is really hard for our library supporters. Do you have an online catalog or anything? Yep, we absolutely do. Everything that we have available, you can search online. And then we actually do, we're really excited about this, um, we offer like mystery book bundles for people. So if you go to our website and click get recommendations, you can actually fill out a little form with your sort of favorite books, books you don't like, and we will create a mystery list for you and either just send it to you or put them all on hold and schedule a time for pickup with you. So you can just come and grab a mystery package from the library of books that you, we know you'll like because we, you've told us what, our, what your past favorites are. So that's something we're really excited about. Are you guys planning on uh, opening up for browsing in inside? Mm -hmm. The next phase will be browsing appointments. So just like with those computer use appointments, they will have to make an appointment ahead of time to browse the library. Um, but that is definitely our next phase. We're waiting to put a few different elements in place so that that is as safe as possible. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And I should say, while we're talking about um, finding materials online, that we actually offer a ton of online resources. Um, so if you have a Portsmouth Public Library card, and by the way, those are free to anybody who lives in Portsmouth. And if you don't have one, you can go on our website and sign up online. You don't even have to come by the library. I have one. I'm trying to find it in my wallet. Yay, excellent. Uh, you can call us if you forgot your number as well. Um, we have uh, ebooks, audiobooks, movies, music, TV shows, magazines, and tons of research and reference resources online. Um, so there's a few different apps that you can get for your phone and watch movies and TV, listen to audiobooks, read books on your phone or on any device, computer, smart TV. So there's a lot of really good resources that people have been using from the library all along. Roxy does tarot card readings. Um, oh, she does. Should definitely bring that up. Um, she does ghost tours. I, I'm sure you probably know that in town. Um, we actually had Roxy present a local history program a couple months ago online. Uh, so uh, what kind of tarot card stuff? What is, what is that whole thing about? Because we're, we're going to hit the Halloween season and who knows what we're going to all be doing because it's yeah. it like we're socially distancing and Halloween doesn't really, it's not very distant. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes, that's in the back of our mind. Um, we are planning, uh, we actually booked a second tarot card workshop because the first one was so popular that we couldn't fit everybody in. Um, and so the leader of that workshop, her name is Kate Sheridan, she really just talks about tarot card readings as um, a tool for self-reflection and sort of accessing your intuition, helping you make decisions in the sense that they kind of make your brain think about a problem in a different way. Um, so we really liked that angle on it. And basically, she just went through the structure of a standard Rider weight tarot deck. It was very interesting. This is why my job is so great. I get to just sit in on a bunch of stuff that I might never have, have gone to. So when you're coming up with these ideas, are, are, are you coming up with them? Or do you have some kind of group that, that comes up with the ideas? That's a great question. So we do have a programming committee, which is made up of people from all different departments in the library. I think at the moment, there's probably 10 people on the committee and we meet once a month. Our programs uh, that we offer are probably half and half uh, library staff ideas or plans that we come up with and um, proposals by members of the community. So someone might come to us and say, I'm a mindfulness teacher, I'd like to do this workshop. And we work with them to fit that into what the community wants. Um, and that sort of community proposals, that also includes requests by people, because a lot of times we'll have somebody say, I'd like to see this movie, or I'd like to learn about this, but actually it costs a lot of money to take a class in it. Is this something the library could offer? Uh, so in the works right now, we have a ukulele class for adults that we'll probably be launching in October. Um, so a lot of stuff in, in the works like that. But we love, love, love to hear suggestions and requests from the public. I mean, my email address is on the website, or you can call us and ask to speak to me, and I love to hear what people are looking for. So it's just the, the library website, is that that's what you yep. guys are off right now? Do you guys have an app or anything yet? 
We don't have a specific library app. A lot of the online resources that we provide, so for example, ebooks and audiobooks with Overdrive Libby, ebooks, audiobooks, movies, music, comics, and TV with the Hoopla app, all of these are free apps that we offer service through. So if you download it using your library card, you can get a lot of free content. Awesome. Yeah. Roxy, you, you can go ahead and jump on in. I've been stealing the uh, questions here. <laughs> So I was very excited to see one of the latest additions to the library, and that is the rabbit sculpture that is yeah. outside. Um, I love rabbits. I have a pet rabbit. So I was wondering if you could share the story about this new sculpture at the library. Absolutely. So um, that is a sculpture in honor of Terry Widener, who was a children's author who tragically passed away last year. And her family and friends asked us and then took up a collection to fund this sculpture. And um, a local sculptor whose name is Thomas um, Berger, he created the design based on her illustrations. So it was this really amazing sort of combination of his artistic talents and his creative energy and hers. Um, and so, yeah, that's been super popular. We actually were thinking, hey, should we turn this whole front lawn into like a sculpture garden? Because people love it so much. And you see kids who come by, they're, they're sort of like ritualistically touching it every time they come in. So it's just super sweet. And we do have all of her books in, in the library that people can request and, and pick up curbside. So we've seen that more people are, are looking at those books as well. So what's on your own personal summer reading list right now? Oh, that's a great question. The, this screen right now is propped up on some of my summer reading. <laughs> um, so I help run the Speculative Fiction Book Club and the Classics Book Club. So right now I'm doing some reading for those. Um, and got An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon is our current speculative fiction pick. We have been trying to pick a lot of authors of color um, this summer in particular. So last month our book was Kindred by Octavia Butler. She's one of our favorites authors. Um, and the same goes for classics as well. We just read, um, oh, of course now it's not coming into my head, so I'm going to put that aside. Um, but upcoming, we're reading an E.M. Forrester book. So if you don't know E.M. Forrester, um, he wrote Room with a View and Howard's End. Um, and he also was gay, but was not able to come out during his lifetime. And so one of his best books is called Maurice, and it wasn't published until after his death. Um, but we'll be reading Howard's End for the Classics Book Club, which is, um, that'll be our September book. So I'm doing a lot of reading for that. Um, and the other thing I've been reading about a lot is um, back in January, we launched an Indigenous Stories series at the library, which has been a really powerful and a very popular programming series. So we're planning to bring that back online probably in October. Um, with a lot of regional speakers of Indigenous descent, um, who speak about either the current predicaments of say the um, Abenaki people in New Hampshire or past history and sort of re revising and revisiting history that was written from a settler point of view. So that has been something that's been fascinating me a lot. So right now I'm reading an indigenous people's history of the United States um, because yeah, that's just a very top fascinating topic. Is there anything that you find people are surprised that the library offers as far as a service or a program? Oh, that's a great question. I hear surprise a lot from people about our programs because they just don't know the, the breadth of what we offer. Like book club, yes, everyone kind of knows that that's probably what we offer. Um, but when I say to people, we can do anything, um, that is surprising. So something like the tarot workshop, um, people are surprised by. But another kind of cool thing is that the library does actually lend more than just, you know, books, movies, music, magazines. We actually lend objects. So some examples are we lend a couple of telescopes. You can actually come and check out a telescope. Make sure you've got two people with you because it's heavy and it's in a big tub. Um, but you can check that out for two weeks and do some stargazing. Um, we offer kilowatt energy detectors. So if you want to see which appliances in your home are using more energy than you'd like, you can plug those in between the appliance and the wall. Um, we are starting to offer a GoPro camera that people can check out and use, which is pretty great, especially in time for skiing season. Um, and I mentioned the ukulele class. We actually check out and loan ukuleles. And that's just a small subset of things. But yeah, adding things like that to the collection, that has been um, really delightful for people to discover as well. 
do you find that you're seeing a lot of new faces and new people now discovering the library considering the climate that we're in right now? Yeah, I do think that's the case. I think the library always sees an influx of use during economic downturns because it's just harder to to purchase the content that you want to see. Um, and that's why we try to offer so much free online as well. Um, and I do think as far as programs go that having it online does mean that it's possibly accessible in a way that maybe an in person program was not. So I do think that we're seeing a different subset of the population attending our library programs. Um, but I also know that life is pretty stressful for a lot of people right now and that when that's happening maybe leisure reading falls by the wayside so it's important to us to sort of get the word out about other things that we can help with we're really great at helping with learning new technology and job searching um, and helping people connect with resources they need um, and that's one thing that's hard about not having a library building open is you were able to have a, a longer in-depth conversation with people about what they needed and help connect them to resources um, and so it was exciting when we were able to open to have our computers available for folks, because often when you're coming in to use a computer, that's when you start to need help, like, you know, with a job application or accessing services online. So, um, yeah, for us, I think this is true across the country, but the pandemic and the, the amount of things that are closed and the way that education and other services are really limited to online access has, I think, made the sort of economic disparity and inequality worse. And I think that's happening in our community too. So we're really focused right now on, on outreach activities and how we can reach folks who are not able to come and say do curbside pickup of books. So that's something we'll have more news about in the next few months, hopefully. And is there a, a newsletter or what's the best way for people to get the most information about what's happening at the library? Because there's so much going on. Yeah, that's a great question. We actually have an email newsletter that comes once a month to your email inbox. We will not share your email with anybody else. If you go to the about page of our website, you can sign up for the email newsletter there. Um, we also, I write a monthly column for the Portsmouth Herald, um, which also goes on Seacoast Online. And there we sort of summarize all the offerings from local libraries in the Seacoast area. Um, but we start with the Portsmouth Public Library. So if you get the paper, you can check the paper. It's usually the first Tuesday of the month that they publish that column. That's terrific, Laura. It really sounds like you guys have your hands full trying to stay connected to the community. I really, I've always admired the library. I, I know what a gem and a resource it is just for me personally and in my own business and workings. So it's great to hear and to share this with everybody in the community. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we sign off today? Yeah, I wanted to say one thing, which is that even if you're not picking up or returning any books, come by and say hi to us at the library because when we're open, there's always someone out front who can answer questions. And our library garden is open to the public and we have a fabulous garden. We actually have sort of three separate areas of the garden. We have raised beds, which have flowers and vegetables and other plants. We have a wildflower meadow, and then we also have a pollinator garden, which was actually planted a couple of years ago with a grant. Um, so it's a really lovely space behind the library that most people don't know about. And if you have kids, you can come and we have a story walk set up so you can read a story as you walk and then hang out in the garden a little bit. We have a picnic table back there. So I always like to tell people about that. Come and check out the library space, even though the building isn't open as usual. Are you guys uh, requiring masks right now? Yes. Great question, thank you. You are required to wear a mask for any of those library activities, even if it's just doing curbside pickup um, and absolutely in the building. Um, and you can see on our website, but we have implemented a lot uh, more stringent sort of um, disinfecting routines. So we are trying to be extremely careful. And in fact, when people return books, we quarantine them for three days before we check them in. So there's a lot of process that goes on. And I think that's the other thing I wanna mention is that if you do come by and say hi, you'll see one person sitting outside, a cart full of books for people to pick up for that hour's pickup time. And you're not going to see how hard my colleagues are working inside. We're running back and forth across the building every hour of every day, answering tons of calls from the public. And so um, I always like to share with people how hard we're working to make all of these services possible, because I know people are frustrated at the moment. Um, but just know that we miss the public and we are working really hard for you. We thank you. Thank, thank you so much for having me.
the library. We love the library, so. Oh, that's so nice. I couldn't find my card. I'm a little unhappy about that. I'll yeah, just call us. We can either issue you a new one or just tell you your card number so you can go online, start reading books. Not at work, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, we thank you uh, for coming on and, and talking with us, telling us uh, all this information. Uh, it's important, and uh, it's good to hear that you guys are doing good over there. Thank you so much, Chad and Roxy. Thanks for having me. All right. We Thanks. will see you soon uh, over at the library. Hopefully, all right. In, or online for renting books. Excellent. Have all a right. good day. Thank you. You too. Thank Bye. you, Laura. You too. Bye-bye. This program was brought to you by Portsmouth Public Media.